All right, we're going to talk about rational functions and their graphs. Um, and so first off, before we start graphing them, we need to know what a rational function is. And I like to think of the key word there being ratio. And so really, here's an example of one first. x squared plus 2x minus 3, some polynomial, over another polynomial. And so there is your first example. It's got to be some p of x some polynomial on top over some q of x. And I use those letters just because it's pretty standard across the board. And it's just one function over another function. So we're going to graph our first um, basic rational function. And the easiest way to do it, we'll start with y equals 1 over x. And the easiest way to do it is, again, to plot points. We're not going to do this every time. We want to know about some general things. And so we're going to talk about x-intercepts and y-intercepts. We'll talk about domain and range, and we're going to talk about a new word called an asymptote. And so we'll see that later. So let's put 0 in the middle. Um, we'll go negative 1, we'll go negative 2, and we'll go 1 and 2. So anytime 1 divided by 0. Can't divide by 0. Um, we won't get into the whole discussion right now, but that's undefined. And so 0 is not part of our domain. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. 1 divided by negative 2 is a negative 1 half. Again, the negative, it doesn't matter sort of where it applies to. 1 divided by 1 is just simply 1, and 1 divided by this 2 being x is 1 half. Now, so we can plot those points, um, 0 being undefined, negative 1, negative 1, 1, positive 1. When we go over to 2, it's 1 half up. When we go over to negative 2, it's negative 1 half. And so we could actually pick a point over here. Let's pick negative 1 half. 1 divided by a negative 1 half is actually going to be 1 times negative, negative 2. You've got to multiply it by the reciprocal. And so you get negative 2 here, and so you can see the pattern. It's going to keep getting closer and closer to the x-axis over here. As you keep dividing by a bigger number, it's going to get closer and closer to 0. And if we pick 1 half over here, 1 divided by 1 half is the same as 1 times 1 half, which is going to give you a positive 2. And so positive 1 half, positive 2 is the other point. And so, like I was saying, is as you divide by a bigger and bigger number, in the negative direction, it's going to get closer and closer, but not actually touch. It won't ever get to zero. And when you divide by smaller and smaller numbers, they get more and more negative. Same thing over here. And so this is the general idea right here. This right here, and I'm going to represent it with a dashed line because it's not actually part of our graph, is a horizontal asymptote horizontal asymptote. It's got a random P in there, asymptote. And then right here, this is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And so we're going to have things like our horizontal and our vertical, and we're going to be able to come up with different ways of how to find those without having to plot points. And so different things we're going to find in the coming pages are going to be zeros and x-intercepts, y-intercepts, domain and range, we're going to use that. We'll find the domain prior, and we'll find the range after we graph it. And then asymptotes, we'll be able to find straight from the function without having to graph it. And that's going to be very important. We'll use the, the graphing calculator as an aid to sort of figure out what's going in, on in between all those bits of information. But that's the basic idea. So, x-intercepts. We've talked about how to find x-intercepts over and over again. How we found x-intercepts on a linear function like this. x-intercepts are where they cross the x-axis. And what 
do all of these points have in common is that the y value is equal to zero. And so what we've been doing all along is just plug in zero for x. Sorry, plug in zero for y. And then solve it. So if we add six over, we get six equals two x. We divide by two, and we get x equals three. And so three zero is our x-intercept. So we're going to do the same thing here to find the x-intercept of a rational function. We're going to plug in 0 for y. So f of x, remember, is the same thing as 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals 6x plus 12 equals x minus 1. Now, if we multiply both sides by x minus 1 to cancel out the x minus 1 on the bottom, 0 times x minus 1, 0 times anything is still going to give you 0. You get 0 equals 6x plus 12. Subtract the 12, you get a negative 12 equals 6x. Divide by 6, x equals negative 2. So the x-intercept of this rational function is x equals negative 2. Two. All right, we're going to keep moving. Y-intercepts. We're going to find these the same way. To find the y-intercept of a quadratic function is just the opposite of an x-intercept. Where does it cross the y-axis? Every x is zero on the x-axis or on the y-axis because you haven't gone left and right at all. So y equals zero squared plus 3 times 0, minus 1. That 0, that 0. So y equals negative 1 is your y-intercept. So 0, negative 1 is your y-intercept. Now back to our original um, rational function that we were using on the other one. Find the y-intercept of this one. Do the exact same thing. I'm just going to put a y instead of the f of x. 6 times 0 plus 12, 0 minus 1, and so this cancels out. You're left with just 12 on top. 0 minus 1 is a negative 1, and so y equals negative 12, because 12 divided by negative 1 is negative 12. 0, negative 12 is our y-intercept. That'll come in handy at the end. All right domain. We've been talking about domain for a while, and with linear functions and quadratic functions, any polynomials had a domain of all real numbers. Remember, this is the input, what you're allowed to plug in for the x's. And we can raise any number, positive, negative, zero, there's no number we can't plug in here. The problem came into play with square roots, because what was underneath the square root x plus 7 had to be greater than or equal to 0 because we couldn't take the square root of a negative number. So we'd set that greater than or equal to 0, subtract the 7, and so our domain was x has to be greater than or equal to negative 7. The problem with rational functions we saw with our first example. Um, we saw with our first example when we divided by 0. Anytime you divide by zero, it's impossible, and you get something that's undefined. And so we can't plug in zero, and it's not in our domain. And so these are going to look more like x can't equal something. And so the problem with this one is if x is one, you get one minus one equals zero, and you can't divide by zero. And so our domain x equals 1 is a problem. And so our domain is going to be all real numbers. x can't equal 1. All right, and we will stop there. Next video is going to start off with the asymptotes.